on the move, changing perceptions, pushing limits. Today's Africa is not framed by the past. A new generation is stepping up, embracing tradition while blazing a new path, giving voice to unique style, connected in ways others before were not. This is where the urban pulse meets creativity and a new culture thrives. This is African Voices. Growing up, Yoruba was my first language. Um, English was learned in school. And, um, uh, and I believe I, I am so proud of you know, my tribe and my heritage and where I'm from and who I am, uh, which is why uh, in most of the films that I do, um, I always try to showcase the richness you know, of who we are as Africans and also as Nigerians and, and also as a Yoruba man. Um, and all of this reflects in most of my film, not only in the language, uh, but also in the aesthetics, you know, in the costumes, in, in makeup, in music, you know, in everything. My Africa is rich, beautiful, and it's hospitable. My name is Kunle Afolayan. I'm a filmmaker and I'm a Nigerian. This is the AY joint. We'll split it. Kunle Afolayan is a triple threat in Nigeria's film industry. An actor, producer, and director, he's cornered the market from every possible angle. It's broken. It's, we break it with uh, these planks. I was born in Lagos, but um, when I was about 17, 18, I moved to Kwara for about for like three years with my father. And um, after my secondary education, I came back. <laughs> Abby Love Films presents. My father was one of the pioneers of uh, commercial filmmaking in Nigeria. He used to, you know, run a traveling theater, you know, where they take stage plays, you know, uh, around Nigeria. In early 70s, he got introduced into film uh, by Dr. Ola Balogo. And after then, he started making his own film in 1978. My father really didn't encourage us to go into filmmaking because he's always saying there's no money. You know, if you want to do it, you're doing it with blood and sweat and all of that. Uh, so he encouraged us more to really, you know, go to school and get educated. Uh, but my father passed uh, 22 years ago. And, um, you know, after he passed, you know, I developed interest in, um, you know, the industry. <laughs> I first started as an actor uh, in 1998. I featured in uh, Tunde Kelani's film, Shawuro Idek. And um, after then, I featured in a few other films. From the beginning, I, my intention was not really to be an actor. My intention really was to be a filmmaker because I think I have the ability, uh, you know, to tell stories, you know, good African stories. I decided that, look, for me to really get this right, let me go and learn. And I went to film school. I did a short course uh, in digital filmmaking, and I came back and set up Golden Effect, which is uh, you know the production company that I run today. With education and experience under his belt, he released his first feature film in 2006, titled Irapada, meaning redemption. It's just a major challenge which would definitely be taken care of. Because of, a, a, you know, I had a bit of production value and paid a lot of attention to details, even with the small uh, available resources in terms of equipment and all of that. It got uh, selected at the London Film Festival and uh, also Pan Africa Film Festival in Los Angeles and, you know, quite a number of other festivals. So. Uh, I mean, my first film really took me around the world. This led to an opportunity to direct a film in the U.S. I got an invitation to be part of a shoot in America uh, by a producer called Catherine Sullivan. She's into installation film. We traveled, we shot part of the film in Miami and Chicago. I have never seen that level of professionalism before because, you know, you are working with professional crew and we had 
I had access to loads of equipment. When I got back to Nigeria, I said to myself, I'm never gonna compromise on production value again. Our great nation, Nigeria, will be independent in two weeks. In 2014, his film October One was acquired by Netflix, a huge step for him and Nigerian cinema. He was on their platform for like two and a half years and he got subtitled in 10 languages. And after that, we did the CEO. I wanted to, uh, you know, do like a, uh, an Africa United kind of film. We had a cast from Morocco, which represented North Africa, uh, from uh, Kenya, which represented East Africa, from Ivory Coast, also from uh, Nigeria. We had our first premiere on the plane from Nigeria to Paris. And um, that was really, that was phenomenal. You know, I mean, premiering a film, you know, 35,000 feet above the sea level and all the cast and about 250 people were on that flight. We broke all the barriers, did, uh, you know, like red carpets at the airport, you know, even, you know, all, all the way into the plane with a DJ. That, that, that was phenomenal. Door, because we have more space here, so our most recent film that we just shot and we're in post-production is titled Mokalik. Mokalik is actually uh, a local accent, uh, which means mechanic. It's the story of a young boy who um, is brought here to come and learn uh, how to be a mechanic and um, a whole lot happens. We're gonna see love, we're gonna get educated. Here are some of my team. Um, it's raining, as you can see. These are some of the things we contend with. Action! Filmmaking is also about team. It's, 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 it's a team playing thing. So every time I want to make a film or I have an idea, that is the first thing. We sit down and start drawing and start putting all of these things together. Because filmmaking is beyond dialogue and is beyond just the story. The industry, I would say, has really grown right now. Um, a lot of our films are being celebrated all around the world. The only area where we seem to have a bit of issue is still distribution. We're making great films, but um, we're, there's still a lot of limitation in terms of getting these films you know, to the international audience. And um, I'm hoping and believing that with time and with all of these international exposures, uh, I believe we'll get there.